In this Wasteland 3 video, we're going to be taking a look at character creation, how you make a good character at the beginning of the game, how to make a good build, what the attributes do, what the quirks do, what skills you should look at taking early on, and just how to get off to a good start. The very first decision you're going to make after your appearance and whatnot, name and all that, is what sort of weapon you want to use. Obviously, you're free to make whatever you want with your character. This is a personal choice, whether you want heavy weapons or sniper or melee or whatever. But if you're a new player and you're new to Wasteland or you're new to Fallout or Brian Fargo games, Melee is usually more challenging to play than ranged, so I strongly suggest picking at least one ranged character, if not two ranged characters, as if this is your first rodeo. If it's not your first rodeo and you know what you're doing, Melee is fine, but generally speaking, at least one ranged character would be good. Looking over the backgrounds, the first one up is Bookworm. This is going to give you plus 5% experience. It's great on any character because they're going to level up faster, but generally speaking, it's not the best background you could take, so I don't recommend taking it because they're just ones that are better. Desert Cat's going to give you plus one perception, which is going to help you with spotting things. It's not the greatest background to start with. Obviously, background isn't everything to do with stats. Maybe that's the background you want to have for role-playing purposes or just because you like it or whatever. Uh, or maybe it has some effect in the game. But if you're talking about just stats, plus one perception is not that great. Disciple of Metal is an excellent background if you plan on using fire damage, if you're going to be a flamethrower type character or you're going to be lobbing Molotovs uh, a lot. So if you know that's the sort of character you're going to make, uh, this is definitely one you're going to want to pick. There are even mods in the game that can convert your weapon damage to fire, so this is just an all-around good choice knowing that that mod is out there, because you could add 15% damage to your weapon no matter what weapon it is. Explodomaniac is amazing on a heavy ordnance character, someone who's going to use like rocket launchers or, or lob grenades a lot. Um, you can frankly just kill like whole groups of enemies with this weapon, and an extra 15% damage is, is just going to help with that, and as enemies get harder and harder, you're going to need more and more damage percentages. So you're definitely going to want to take this one if you have like a heavy weapons type character. Goat Killer, besides being one of the funniest backgrounds there is, is very, very good on any character. Plus 5% critical chance it's going to apply to any sort of damage you do against any type of target. And since intelligence is one of the best ways to boost your overall damage in the game and it increases your crit damage and your crit percentage, you're going to be doing a lot of crits if you have high intelligence. So this is just good on any character. Grease Monkey is another one that's very good. Extra damage against robots and vehicles. You can never have enough damage in this game. Um, this is a very select enemy type, so it's not going to apply it everywhere. It's not the most common type early on in the game, so you're not going to really see a benefit from this until mid-late game. Lethal Weapon, obviously, is a no-brainer if you're making a melee character. This is going to apply 10% damage to all of your melee attacks. If you're only doing melee, this is what you're going to pick. Man Right gives you plus one to Persuasion, essentially, since that's what Kiss-Ass really does. I don't think this is worth it. There are better benefits like plus 10% damage. It just gets better and better as your numbers get bigger. But this is essentially one skill point, which isn't as valuable. Same thing with money bags. It's basically just one skill point. I think there are better bonuses out there. Mopey Poet is good. Plus 5% evasion is a significant amount of evasion in this game. But the thing is, is it's a very defensive bonus. And I'm kind of in the mindset that the best defense is a good offense in this game. So things that boost damage so you can get enemies dead on, the, on your turn so less things are attacking you is probably going to reduce the damage you take more than relying on 5% evasion. Same thing with Paladin, this is effectively a defensive passive. I'm of the mindset that attacking and killing things is going to keep you alive longer than preventing damage. Raider Herod is one of the best all-around backgrounds you can pick early on. You fight primarily humans early on in the game, so you're going to get a 10% increase to damage for a good 5 to 10 hours of the game probably. Uh, so you definitely want to consider taking this one, you're going to be fighting humans all throughout the game. You can never have enough damage. It's not a bad choice. Sex Machine is a great background for someone who needs combat speed. This is either going to be a melee character primarily or maybe a heavy weapons character because heavy weapons tend to lower your combat speed and they can't move much. And that generally puts them in an unfavorable position to fire or they can move and then they can attack. So you're going to want to probably take this on a melee character or you're going to want to take this on like a heavy weapons character if you didn't take like Pyromaniac. Stoner again is another defensive perk or background, I think you should probably take offensive ones, so I don't recommend this. 10% resistance is not a lot. The boss gives you plus one to hard ass. Again, this is essentially just one skill point. That's not that good of a bonus compared to what you can get, so I wouldn't suggest taking this one unless you just want that background. And finally, Vicious Avenger is not a bad choice. Plus two penetration is going to bypass that much armor when attacking enemies. Uh, this is really good for weapons that have lower uh, damage values, like automatic weapons that do like 10, 11, 15 damage a shot versus a sniper that does like 100 damage a shot. So you, each bullet is going to get stopped by that armor. So you're going to want to use this if you're probably using automatic weapons or something that has a lower base value, like a pistol maybe. Now when you get to the attributes section, no matter what type of build you made, make sure you read the descriptions of what they do thoroughly because 
In Wasteland 3, they're a little bit different than what you'd expect from other traditional CRPG type games. And some stats have kind of been combined. For instance, Strength gives you health per level and increases your melee damage. So typically, this would have been Constitution and Strength separated, but they're merged in this game. So you really want to read these and decide, you know, what is best for your character. Just looking over the attributes, Coordination is first, and it's probably one of the most important attributes for any character in the game. Not only does it increase your max action points, because you can carry action points over to the next round if you don't use them all, it increases the action point total that you'll have to begin a round, which is huge, and it increases your status effect resistance, preventing you from getting bleeding or burning a lot more often. So you seriously want to consider this attribute on any character. It's going to give you one additional action point every even number. So at two in it, four in it, six, eight, ten, you're going to gain one additional action point and one max. So try and plan for that and aim to get an even amount because you're going to see the most benefits at even amounts. Luck is going to increase your penetration by one at every even level except for the last jump, which takes it up two points. So you can get max of plus six penetration. And it also gives you the chance for lucky things to happen to you, like a lucky crit or a mega crit or to evade. So it's just a really good stat all around to dump points into because it helps offensively as well as defensively. Now taking a look at awareness, this attribute you would think would increase your hit chance by, you know, the most out of any attribute, and it does. But the thing is, is at level 12, it only increases your hit chance by 12%. That is not a ton. Uh, the weapon that you're using dictates the accuracy that you have far more than awareness does. So the reason to take awareness is for perception, spotting traps, and such like that. So maybe on your sneaky character so that he doesn't get himself killed. And it also increases your ranged damage by 35% at max. So it's going to increase your range damage every level. So the more you have in it, the more damage you'll do. Now, the interesting thing about this is that intelligence actually increases your critical chance and critical damage per point. So at max, you're going to have plus 25% critical chance and a multiplier of 2.1 times whenever you critically hit. You start at one by default. Every crit you do does one by default, and then it goes up per point by, you know, percentage. What this means is that intelligence is probably actually going to boost your damage far more than awareness will. Awareness is going to give you a flat 35% damage at max, but if you crit, let's say you have a 40 or 50% crit chance with the weapon you're doing, and you do 2.1 times the damage, that is a lot more damage than awareness is going to give you. So awareness is actually not that great of a stat to take on most characters, and you primarily want to take it on characters that need to spot things, and ones that obviously are using range damage as well. So this is going to be sort of like your tracker character that's out ahead of everyone making sure you don't step on landmines, but you don't want to try and necessarily make your sniper with awareness as much as you do intelligence. That's not to say you shouldn't have awareness on your sniper, because you could, but you might want to prioritize intelligence first and then make your way over to awareness. Now taking a look at strength, as I mentioned, strength is basically a combination of what strength and constitution would be in other CRPGs. Not only gives you more health, gives you melee damage and throne range, and it gives you extra health per level. Con is health. You're going to want this on, you know, a little bit on just about every character, but primarily on frontlines characters, characters that are going to get hit the most, even if they're not using a melee weapon, you know, people that are like using your heavy guns or people that are using shotguns or SMGs because they're going to get shot at more and you don't want them to die. Speed is a very important attribute for any build because in, first of all, it increases your combat speed. Combat speed is how far you can move with each action point. Melee characters need lots of combat speed in order to get to their target and still be able to have action points to attack, otherwise they're going to be standing there doing nothing after they moved all the way across the map, and they're just going to get blown away on the enemy's turn. So combat speed is absolutely vital on a melee character. It might be the most important stat for them besides strength. It's going to be a combination of speed and strength for melee characters. It additionally gives you evasion, which makes targets harder to hit, uh, which is good for any build. Uh, any character can benefit from getting shot less. But again, front lines characters, people that are on the front probably need to get shot less because they're going to get shot at more often. So make sure your frontline characters have some speed. And initiative makes it so you have a higher chance of going first once you're spotted. So your, your point man, your point person that's going out first scouting for mines or whatever uh, that's out front taking that opening shot, you want to make sure they have high speed so that your team gets to go first and you don't start combat and then you all get wasted away before you can get in position. Uh, I like to have this on my heavy weapons character. Because I usually like to begin combat by just firing a rocket into a crowd. So I want to make sure they have high initiative so that when they're spotted, that we get to go first. And finally, Charisma increases your strike rate. This is how fast your little gauge is going to build up that you can do a precision strike, which is good for just about anyone. But leadership range is only applicable to the person that has leadership. 
So you wanna make sure if you have a lot of charisma, you probably take leadership on that character. Leadership works very similarly to the way that it did in DOS 2, where it gives benefits to your party members if they're in range. By increasing that range, you're gonna make sure more of them are affected. It also increases the experience bonus of this character, so they're gonna level up faster, and it's gonna give you more mission reward bonus. So you want probably one character to have really high charisma, and you know everyone else could probably have average charisma, it'd be fine. Moving along to skills, we'll take a look at combat skills first. This is where you're going to get your hit chance from. At max level of any combat skill, you're going to get plus 30% hit chance. You get 3% chance per point into these skills. So if you need hit chance, this is where you're gonna get it from. I would try to stick to one category of weapon if possible. If you get into the game and you realize that whatever you made isn't really what you wanted to do, you can always start over. Or if you don't wanna start over and you wanna just keep going, selecting another weapon category isn't the end of the world. You could probably do two okay. But just keep in mind that you're going to get perks less often because the perks in the game have level requirements uh, for each skill. So it like, you know, big guns level seven or something, you're going to get a perk. If you don't get that far because your points are split between big guns and small arms, you're not going to get some of the better perks for these weapon types. So ideally you'd be, you know, going down one train of weapons until you max it out. I do want to make one note about brawling here. This skill not only increases your damage with brawling weapons, it also increases your combat speed, allowing you to move further every turn. We talked about this. So this is a very, very effective skill for any melee build. Um, but if you're using fist weapons, obviously it's gonna be even better for you. Moving along to general skills, we'll take a look at Animal Whisper. This allows you to tame a friendly animal to follow you and attack in combat and increases your animal companion damage at every level. Um, I'm pretty sure you can take at least one point of this on every character and have tons of animals follow you around. So if you want to have a lot of animal companions, be sure to take at least one point on each character. But if not, you're probably going to have at least one character that maxes this out because having an, basically, you know, a seventh companion or a seventh party member that's very strong, very, very helpful. Explosives is going to increase your explosive resistance as well as your explosive damage bonus, which is really good if you have a heavy ordnance character, someone that uses rockets or throws grenades a lot. You're going to want to make sure you take a lot of points of this because you want those rockets to hit like a truck. And also, if they're up front, you know, they're probably going to be more likely to get hit by uh, enemy hostile explosives. So this is not bad to have on them. And disabling landmines is something you're going to do throughout the entire game. So you definitely want somebody, at least one person, to have 10 points in this eventually. Taking a look at first aid, I think first aid is an absolute, one point in first aid is an absolute must on every character. This allows you to use a med kit. You find tons of med kits everywhere. These heal you for about, I don't know, 35 con every turn for three turns which is basically a full heal on most characters. If you don't have one point in them, you can't use them on yourself. You have to rely on a teammate. So I like to put at least one point in first aid here, but having more points does increase the effectiveness of first aid items. But I think it's better to just have, you know, one character that has first aid for dialogue options, things you can do in the game, and everyone else has one point in order to make the best use of medkits. Sneaky Shit is a very, very strong skill because it gives perception, allowing you to spot traps. So if this is, your, you know, you have your point person going out ahead, you want this, they want to have some of this. It also increases their initiative again. So if they trigger combat, that's more likely your team's going to go first. It also takes them longer to get detected. So if you're trying to do stealth takedowns, it's good. And it also increases your sneak attack damage. So if you're the, you know, firing a sniper shot from not being seen, it's going to boost it by 10% for each point. This is going to make it so you could probably one shot, you know, at max level, one shot anyone from, from anywhere. Weird Science is an interesting skill because it increases your energy damage, fire damage, and cold damage. So any weapons that use these, these are going to be like some, you know, specially weird weapons that require Weird Science to wield in the first place. So it's going to be a very particular character who uses these. Obviously, if you're using like a flamethrower or something, this is a good one to take because it's going to boost your fire damage since flamethrowers do fire. Um, so you might want to take that on them. But this is probably going to be like one character in your group with two characters that are using energy weapons or a particular flamethrower build. So you probably won't take this on most characters. Moving along to exploration skills, first one is armor modding. This allows you to modify armor and put things into it. Uh, and obviously the higher rank you go, it allows you to use better and better mods. This is not cumulative across your characters. This means that if one person has armor modding and another person has three ranks in armor modding, uh, you have four together. Like it's the highest person and anyone can mod armor as long as at least one person has it. So you're gonna wanna limit this to one character in your group and max it out eventually. Lockpicking is just an excellent skill, and again, much like armor modding and all the exploration skills, 
It's not cumulative. If one person has lockpicking one and another person has lockpicking one, you don't have lockpicking two. It's the highest person in your group's lockpicking that determines whether they can lockpick it or not. And you'll notice this because if you don't select your whole group when you try and open a door and you just have one character, it will only use their lockpicking. So this is really good to have primarily on one character. Uh, you definitely want to take this up to like three or four really quickly on one character and get a lot of free loot, particularly at the beginning of the game, and continue to level that over the course of the game on one character if possible. Nerd stuff is kind of like hacking. This allows you to do things with computers and override things. Uh, much like lockpicking, you're going to want to pick one character and you're going to want to have them take this up to 10 throughout the course of the game. Mechanics, again, same thing. This increases your damage versus robotics, vehicles, and synths. Um, goes all the way up to 30%, so this is very good on anyone who's going to be shooting these. A few points here on most characters wouldn't hurt, but again, you know, using the mechanics check, it doesn't add all your party together. It's the highest person in your group. So you probably want to, you know, pick a select mechanic and make sure that they max this out eventually. Survival is an interesting skill. This makes it so that you avoid dangerous things on the world map. If you're at all familiar with the old Fallout games, when you're traveling around on the world map, sometimes you'll get a random encounter and you'll get dead because it's really bad. Uh, this basically prevents that from happening to you more. You won't even notice that it's happening because you won't know that you missed it. So it's a really weird one to invest in. A lot of people like getting into dangerous situations, so it's absolutely not a must on most characters. But getting increased damage versus animals and mutants isn't bad, but this isn't something I would prioritize on most characters. Toaster repair is a weird skill because there are random toasters throughout the game that give you experience if you repair them and you can actually get loot from them and other buffs. Um, so this one again is one that, you know, you just want to have one character max it out over the course of the game. And you want to try, you know, with your party to make sure you have each one of these things covered so that you have, at, by the end of the game, 10 in each one, and your group is ma you know, having max check for everything that you do. Weapon modding is very, very similar to armor modding. As long as you have one person who has it, it's going to allow you to modify any weapons, no matter who's got it equipped. And it gives you extra scrap when you're field stripping some of your equipment, so you'll definitely want this as well. Moving along to social skills, barter is first up, and the primary function of barter is to increase your sell value. This is going to make your junk or anything you sell worth more money by up to 500%, which is a lot. And it does reduce your buy cost by 1% per point, but that's not very much. I mean, the idea here is that you go out and loot a bunch of stuff and you sell it, make a bunch of money and buy whatever the person has at basically full rate. So if you want to make more money or you need more money, barter is a good skill. And again, barter it uses the highest person in your group. It's not cumulative, so make sure one character is working on this. Hardass and kickass are basically your intimidate and persuade skills. Again, when you're having a dialogue with your group, it's going to use the highest value of that you know, person in that group. So you want to make sure one person's got hard ass and one person has kick ass, or maybe the same person has both and no one else has these. It's up to you, uh, but you want to make sure you get these to 10 so you can pass those checks. Uh, leadership, as I mentioned, bon gives bonuses to characters in your group that are near you. Uh, they gain hit chance, damage, crit chance, um, and they're healed by a lot more when they're revived. Uh, this is going to go on your character that's primarily you know, using charisma, or charisma is one of their main stats. So try and match that up. Try and plan for one person to be the leader of the group. And that person has a lot of charisma and leadership. That brings us to finally quirks, which are sort of like one-time perks that you can't um, select after character creation. Usually they come with a pro and a con, so we're just going to go through these and see who might use them. So first up is Blunderer. This is going to give you extra melee damage for reduced critical chance by 50%. I don't think that's a very good trade-off. Most characters can benefit from high critical chance, even melee characters. So I wouldn't su suggest taking this on anyone unless you're like trying to make some sort of melee build that does zero critical damage. Bot bat is an interesting one because that is a lot of armor to get, but you lose combat speed. So if you're thinking of making a melee character, this looks enticing, but that hit to combat speed is going to mean you use a lot more AP to get to your target, which is going to be really detrimental to you. So I would only suggest taking this on a character that doesn't plan on moving much, like maybe a sniper or maybe a heavy weapons character that gets in a spot, doesn't ever plan on moving if possible. Circus Freak is an interesting one because it increases your combat speed and gives you crit resistance, but reduces your evasion and your detection time. So this might again be good for a character that's trying to get into melee range. Um, the lack of evasion is going to hurt a little bit and detection time is going to hurt, but it doesn't reduce your initiative at all. So you still, your team should still get to go first if you have high initiative. And getting that extra combat speed, this is, you know, it's going to kind of remove that stealth element from that character but maybe you don't care about stealth and you just want to run in and whack something in the face whether they know you're coming or not. It's good for that sort of character. Death Wish is an interesting perk, one that I don't recommend for new players because basically you can't wear any armor. 
but in exchange you get max action points increased by plus three and three more action points every round. This is going to be good only on a character that stays way the hell back and you're not planning on getting them shot at all. Now here's the detrimental part or the part that you need to keep in mind when doing this. Most sniper rifles take six AP to use. So in order to get two shots off every turn, which would be ideal with this sort of quirk, you'd have to have at least nine. That means you need to put points into coordination in order to have 12 action points. And that means you can only fire two shots without even moving. So you might want to have even more than that. Doomsday Prepper basically gives you 35% increased resistance to status effects, but you can't read skill books. Uh, there are skill books in this game, much like Fallout, where you read them and you get a point in that, you know, skill line. This is very valuable. Um, so this is going to be a tough decision for you. If you know exactly where the skill books are placed in the game and what order and, you know, maybe the ones you want are like far into the game, maybe this would be good for you to take. But I don't recommend taking this one right out the gate because I think skill books are, are just too valuable. Lone Wolf is a great quirk for the character that's going to be your point person or more of the assassin character. The plus 20% initiative is going to give you a much higher chance of your team going first after they get their first shot off. And, you know, generally speaking, leadership has a, a, an effective range. They're probably going to be outside the effective range of leadership anyway. So it's a great quirk to take on a character that you know is going to be way out in front, either shooting or stabbing something, and you want to make sure that you go first in combat. Medical Marvel is a great skill. It's going to give you five health every level you level up. The downside is that you can't be revived during combat. What I like about this quirk is that it plans for success. If you have more health, then you probably don't die as much and you don't need reviving. Nobody wants to have to revive in combat. Shit happens, though. But I think this is a great pickup for just about any character. I wouldn't probably take it on every character if you're new to the game, or maybe even take it on any character if you're new to the game, because you're probably going to make some mistakes in combat and have a few downs, and you don't want to be able to revive nobody in your combat. This is probably something you want to take when you're playing on one of the easier difficulties of the game, or when you're a bit more familiar with the game. Moving along to Mime, this is another great quirk for a point character, a stealthy character going to take an additional two seconds for you to get spotted. That is a lot of detection time. That's going to allow you to get in range. If you're going to play like a stabby, snabby, sneaky character, absolutely consider getting this one. Poindexter is an interesting one because you're going to gain an extra skill point every two levels, but you're going to be a lot easier to kill in combat. So I wouldn't recommend taking this on any front lines character or any mid-range character. Maybe on your sniper character, if you're making your sniper into sort of your you know, character that also has like a lot of other social or exploration skills because you want to get maxed out on, a, you know, several of those. But otherwise, it's not one that I would recommend. The, the hit to health is going to be huge throughout the course of the game. Prospector is just a strange one. You're going to gain basically more gold throughout the game when you find these valuable nuggets, but you lose a quick slot. You only have two quick slots by default, so this is going to put you at one. This allows you to use like grenades or a healing kit for, you know, from your inventory. I don't recommend going down to one if you're a new player. Maybe if you know exactly what you want your build to be and this isn't your first run through, then maybe consider taking this, but I wouldn't take it as a new character. Pyromaniac is a very, very good quirk for a character that is going to be heavy ordnance with grenades or rockets or flamethrower because it's going to give you a ton of damage increase. It has the negative chance to set you on fire. Fire does, you know, health over time over a few rounds. But if you have good status effect resistance, you should be okay. And maybe you could even look for equipment that gives you fire resistance specifically. Um, so, or, you know, reduces burning damage or fire damage. Um, so this is one I definitely consider taking on somebody that's going to use, uh, you know, explosive weapons like a rocket launcher. But it's not a must. Sadomasochist is an interesting skill. I've been using this on my main character in my playthrough. You take 33% more damage, but you deal more melee and range damage. My character, who the main character who's had this, has died the most out of any person in my group. So it's very difficult to use. He, of course, ended up being a shotgun character who runs up and shoots people in the face. So he gets shot all the time. So I don't recommend taking this if you're going to play a point-blank character. Uh, anyone who uses close-range weapons. If you're going to play like a sniper or something like that, consider taking this. But do not take it if you're going to be a front-lines character. It does not work very well. Serial Killer is probably one of the best quirks there is. In exchange for losing one action point, you can gain plus three action points if you kill something in combat every turn. This is great. Um, it's very difficult for new players, and it's definitely hard to use at the beginning of the game because you don't have a lot of action points. But you're going to want to make sure you have lots of coordination if you take this quirk because you're going to have to make up for that missing action point and getting more coordination is going to give you more action points. But it's kind of like Executioner from DOS 2. It's just one of the best out there. If you learn to use it effectively, you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck here. Two Pump Chump is a quirk that I wouldn't recommend to new players, but is probably very good in the right experienced hands because it's going to give you two AP the first couple of turns. 
And if you're really good, you can probably gain the upper hand or the advantage in the first couple turns by killing off the most amount of enemies. So this is very useful in accomplishing that. But if you're not familiar with the mechanics of the game, and you're not familiar with the scenarios, and you don't know what you're going to be doing, this is probably not going to be good for you in most battles. Ferengi and Blood is another one of those where it you never want to plan for failure, which is what this does when your teammate goes down. You get 100% critical chance in 3 AP, which is great. But you never want to plan on a teammate going down. So I don't recommend it, particularly because of the penalty. If there were no penalty, it would probably be a no-brainer pickup, because why not get free stuff if something bad happens that makes it more likely you pull off the thing. But if you don't, you know, pull it off in one round or something, you're going to be penalized pretty severely for the next couple rounds. So I don't suggest this one to new players. Waste Roamer, on the other hand, is an excellent quirk for any character. You're going to gain 100% resistance to Bleeding, Shock, Burning, Frozen, Poisoned, and in exchange for just losing some experience. If you put this on your leadership type character, the character that's got high charisma, um, that charisma bonus is going to offset your experience bonus negativity. So they'll have about the same experience as other characters and they'll have all that resistance. So I would suggest doing something like that. But if not, basically you're going to get a level a little less often than your other characters in exchange for being completely immune, which is not a bad trade-off. Way of Squeezins is the last quirk in the game and it sort of gives you this drunken master type setup. Uh, you have reduced ranged and melee damage, but when you're drunk, you have increased ranged and melee damage. I highly recommend, if you're going to take this one, being a melee character. And that's mostly because all the beer that I have found in the game so far that you need to drink in order to become drunk and get that drunk status effect naturally boosts your melee damage anyway. So it's going to give you not only the plus 50% melee damage from your quirk, but then plus 25% melee damage from the beer. So you're going to get plus 75% melee damage. So if you're going to take this quirk, Highly recommend doing so on a melee character. You can still do it on a ranged character and get more damage, but I think it works more effectively on a melee character. Be sure to check out our other guides on best perks and build guides for the game as we cover Wasteland 3 throughout the next week or so. And be sure to check out the official wiki if you need specific questions answered with the game.